Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic systemic inflammatory disease which is characterized by symmetrical deforming peripheral polyarthritis which means it involves a lot of joints, especially the small joints. For epidemiology, the prevalence is around 1% and smokers are at a higher risk of having rheumatoid arthritis. Female to male ratio is more than 2 to 1. Females are more prone to rheumatoid arthritis. And the peak onset of age is around 50 to 60 years old. The symptoms, typically pre patients present with symmetrical, swollen, painful and stiff joints, especially the small joints of the hands and the feet. And the pain is worse in the morning. This can fluctuate and larger joints may also become involved. However, small joints are more common. Some of the signs, the early signs of rheumatoid arthritis are inflammation without joint damage. These are the early signs where there will be swollen metacarpal phalangeal, proximal interphalangeal, raised joints, or for the legs, the metatarsal phalangeal joints. So you can see over this picture over here, MCP, PIP and DIP, which are the metacarpal phalangeal joint, proximal interphalangeal joint, and the distal interphalangeal joint. For the leg, the red area is the metatarsal phalangeal joint, the MTP joint. And we should also look for tenosynovitis or bursitis. Later on, the later signs include joint damage and deformity, where we might see ulnar deviation and subluxation of the wrists and fingers, botanial deformity of fingers, swan neck deformity of fingers, and on the thumb, there might be Z deformity of the thumb. So let's take a look at the pictures. This first picture shows the swan neck deformity, where the DIP is infection, and the proximal interphalangeal, the PIP is in hyperextension. So it looks like a swan neck. The second picture shows the botonial deformity, where it is opposite to the swan neck deformity, where the distal joint is extended and the proximal joint is flexed. For Z deformity, it involves the thumb, where there is interphalangeal flexion, an MP hyperextension and carpal metacarpal joint flexion. These are the few deformities that we might see in rheumatoid arthritis patients. For investigation, rheumatoid factor is positive in around 70% of the cases. Anticyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies, anti-CCP, they are highly specific for rheumatoid arthritis, which is around 98% specificity, and a reasonable sensitivity, which is around 70-80%. to 80%. We should also do joint x-ray and we expect to see soft tissue swelling, we might see some degree of juxta articular osteopenia and also reduced joint space. Later on, there may be some bony erosions, subluxation or even we might see complete carpal destruction. Other investigations include full blood count where there might be some anemia of chronic disease or increased platelet and the ESR and CRP are expected to be high since this is an inflammatory disease. So this is the diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis. So the four main points to diagnose is A is to look for joint involvement and there are more points for smaller joints. Second one is serology which are the rheumatoid factor RF and the anti-CCP. So if both positive, the, there is highest probability of rheumatoid arthritis. The third one is acute phase reactants like CRP and ESR. So if they are abnormal, if they are high, it is more suggestive of rheumatoid arthritis. And the fourth one is the duration of symptoms, where six weeks and more will be more suggestive. So if we total up the scores, the score that is six or more is diagnostic of rheumatoid arthritis. For management of rheumatoid arthritis, we refer early to rheumatologists before there is irreversible destruction of the joints. And early use of DMARTs and biological agents improve long-term outcomes. You can give steroids in some cases 
to reduce the symptoms and inflammation. NSAIDs for symptom relief, but it has no effect on the disease progression. We can offer specialist physiotherapy and occupational therapy, for example, giving walking aids and splints. Surgery may relieve pain and improve the function and also prevent deformity. And we should also manage the risk factors of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease as there is an increased risk of these diseases because arteriosclerosis is accelerated in rheumatoid arthritis. That's all for this video. Thank you.